nice and warm in here. Got the wood stove raging, burning up garbage and cardboard and parts of my water bed when I renovated my bedroom. So now the track has gone bad on my sled. I'll show you what I mean. I always drive them till they rip off. See the great big chunk coming out of it? Well, you'll see the rest of it when I get it off. And there's the new one. 400 bucks plus tax. So first thing we're up to do a track job is take off the chain cover. And of course have a tray to catch the oo and the goo that's going to run out of there, the gear oil. This has got the 500 engine in it, not the 440. I put an old-fashioned 1981 engine in this 19, I mean in this, yeah, this 1989, I mean, what is this now? It's a 1998 sled with a custom-made exhaust, modified from a couple different pipes. Goes a lot better now. So, in a second I'll be hanging her up by the rear and working underneath and getting the undercarriage off as soon as I get that oil drained out and the chain off. Ooh, good thing I took a look in there. I guess we did a few too many pond crosses and some water somehow got in my gearbox. But she's still okay. We have to retension it just a little bit. So we're all set then, no problem. And it's dripping in the bucket. Now to get the chain off. You just take those uh, nuts off, that's the big, no big deal. Now getting those well lubed nuts off was totally easy, so now just have to slide everything off. Done. Too easy. Now, let's get this thing up. Well, now you can get a better view of how badly wrecked that track is. Now to undo that bolt, and I guess that bolt, and that one there, those little top rollers, then the whole thing, the whole carriage will drop down. Well, now the track is completely hanging on the floor. And the only thing holding it on is the main cog drive shaft right there. So to make life easier, I'm just going to take a knife and slash the track in half, get it off, and then it's easier to get that shaft out. Of course, the hardest part of doing this job is putting it back together, that's for sure. Especially if you're all alone. Done. Well, now just to check all the rollers. Hmm. Not good. Hmm. Not good. Oh, that one's okay. That one sounds like shit. Hmm. Not good. Not good. Well, that one's okay. Hmm. That's okay. Looks like I gotta buy a bunch of bogey wheels. Now, of course, you always gotta check for cracks in the welds. And ooh, there's one right there. And of course, you can just take your handy dandy welder and fix them all up before you put it back together. Ooh, there's another problem. Look at that gap worn in the aluminum. Oh well. Now to peel off the track, check the sliders. That doesn't look too good there. I may need more work than I thought. Oh well, I'm not going to go right in again until Saturday and it's only Tuesday. Well, after a trip to the snowmobile shop, I've got some bearings and a roller and a shaft that I needed. So I've got to do some replacements. And also the new sliders. The old ones are so bad. So I just removed the retaining screw and started tapping it back with a hammer and slip it right off and tap the new one right back on and put the retaining screw back in. We're all set. Then to change a couple rollers and replace some bearings and a bunch of other bogey wheels. Now just slip the new one on. And then trim it to length at the end. Of course when you want to put your new track back on you have to untension the track tensioner bolts so that the track can easily slip on without having to pry it over those wheels I just pulled off. So I'll pull them back quite a bit. Now to pop out those snap rings, the handy dandy pliers, 
and tap in some new bearings just remember never hit them there you always hit them around the outside when you knock them back in if you hit them there it'll wreck them now there's the old bearings they've all been changed now sliders have been trimmed now to use the grease gun and get all the nipples in that so we can get it all lubed up before we slip the track on and put the carriage back in well now it's time to get that thing up in there on those drive cogs we gotta get that shaft out so remove the two bolts that hold the brake caliper on remove the two nuts that hold this unit to the body and then there's three more bolts that hold it down there where the bearing goes through get all those off and we've got to slip this cup lift this off slip this cover over and pull the shaft out so we can shove it through there well three bolts there two for the caliper two there it just slip right off by hand feel the bearings that they're not loose and noisy these ones are okay I'm going to check the bearing on the other side then get this shaft out now I've unbolted the bearing mount on the opposite side, the jack shaft area. There's the speedometer drive. Now I should be able to pull the shaft through, I hope. Shaft is through the middle, cogs are all on their teeth. Got the bearing greased on the opposite side. This is a directional track, so I saw the little arrow, so it points to go that way. Now the tricky part, which I can't film. I guess we have to crawl underneath there and slip it up into the hole, those shafts. Now that the track is hanging on by one end, I've got the nuts that hold that bearing plate on, just finger tight. I'll put them halfway tight or a little bit more with the air gun so that the shaft will still wobble around a little bit so I can line it up and shove it through when I put that chain cover back on the other side. I've made sure all the cogs are in their grooves. Now to slip that sucker on. Now to just tighten everything up. Now to just slip the caliper back on and hopefully nobody squeezed it or else that would be pushed together and bolt it on. Now to slip this back on. You may have to loosen the tensioner off a little bit and put the spacers back on correctly and then the nuts and bolts and everything. Now when you're putting this thing back in, gravity is not your friend, so you can't sort of lift it up there by yourself and slip it under when you're hanging your sled like that. So what I'm going to do is take it off, put it on the ground, flip it over on its side, and then slide that thing in. It'll be a lot easier to work with. I've got all that stuff bolted back on and just got to clean the old cover off and seal her up and refill her with oil and slip that thing in and we're all done. working well. Cool. Oops, good enough. Well that's going to make things a lot easier. Now just pick her up, slip her in there, get the front two on first and then work your way back. Make sure you don't lose these little collars that go in there. Now I've got that all set in. Got one bolt started, the front most important one. Now I'll start this little upper roller shaft next. And then I'll have to get the two front that, that bolt and that bolt from in from the other side. And then those ones, and then that's it. Just uh, tension the belt. Cool. Or track. Now all by myself, she's all on. Last thing left to do is just tighten up these two adjuster screws and then tighten up the nuts at both sides so it clamps it onto the rails and when you hang the sled in the air it should hang down about a half to three quarters of an inch between the track and the sliders if you've got it adjusted right and then after just a short while driving you should adjust it more it stretches a little bit finish this all off minivans are very useful things they can fit big snowmobiles it's just a little bit difficult lifting it in so now we're off to the farm to try out the new track. Sweet, Saturday morning, December 18th or something like that. A week ahead of Christmas. Well, now with a little help from the Chevy Act, we're ready to get this sucker out. Only problem is, it takes two people because 
But this fan isn't as high as my blue van that I brought it home in and the windshield's catching. So I gotta stand inside and put some weight on that and bend it down while this guy well, drives slowly forward. slowly forward. And then when we'll, we'll do the last part by hand. All right, let me climb in the door and fire this puppy up. Okay, slam that puppy and drive and let's rock. Faster. Ah, oh, we're all set. Now let's ride. <laughs>